Yeah, and back in September, Tagala shot a final round 68 in the Fortinet Championship, and that secured his first PGA Tour victory in his 74th start. Began that day with a two-shot lead and quickly separated himself back then. The first five holes, three under, cruised to the victory. It's been quite an impressive season that's ongoing for Tagala right now. 30 events, runner-up, eight top tens, only four missed cuts, and of course that first victory that we saw just a few weeks ago at the Fortinet Championship. And Sahith Tagala joins us now from Cabo San Lucas, Mexico, where he's aiming for that second PGA Tour victory. Sahith, you've, you've had a few weeks to process the victory in the Fortinet Championship in Napa. Does it feel like a weight has been lifted off you, given how much expectation has been on you, even since your days at Pepperdine? Yeah, yeah. It was uh, obviously a super special week, and um, it does feel like a little bit of a weight has lifted off me. Um, it's funny because... I myself didn't have that expectation of really winning. Um, it was kind of an if thing, not a when thing, but I had so many great people and my team around me just pushing me to, to get to where that was. So um, it definitely kind of frees things up a little bit. It's not, I, I would be lying if I said it wasn't on the back of my mind a little bit. So um, it's just nice to, I I've always feel like I'm kind of a freewheeler on the course, but now it, it really feels like, um, you know, I have nothing to lose again. Let's go back to that Sunday in Napa. Those were scenes we'd really never seen before. It was electric. It was a party. Your parents were getting as much camera time as you. What was that evening like when everything was done yeah. and you were just sitting around the table with your family? Yeah, yeah. Well, one, I didn't. It was, uh, it was a lot after actually winning. Um, it was like I had to kind of hold in all my excitement and... Uh, celebratory ways for a couple hours um student it was great i'd do it in a heartbeat again but just <laughs> media stuff and all that so i had to wait uh wait for them but they were all in uh in player dining and when i walked in uh, i got sprayed down a little bit with some, some champagne and yeah it was, it was a party for a while um it was it was, it was just awesome that it was such a great week because all my family most of my family that's in the states is in is in california and and a lot of my girlfriends, friends were and family were able to watch me for the first time too. So um, it just worked out as good as it can, really. How has that day reset your goals then for not just your, your broader career, but just even for this year and next year? So has, now that you've got that victory, that monkey's off your back, what are you thinking of in terms of your targets coming up? Yeah, um, it's funny, like expectation-wise, it hasn't really changed that much. Kind of the same thing that I've been doing is is just focusing more on my golf and the process and just really trying to get a little bit better each day and each week or whatever that is and, and just keep putting in the work and seeing where that takes me and, and trying to be as little result-oriented result as possible. And it's been really cool doing that because I feel like I've made so much – of a jump in my game since I'd say my junior year of college to now. Um, I feel like I've made a lot of progress and whether my scores reflected or not, I feel it in my body and um, it could be a little mental self-belief or something physical, but um, just kind of sticking to that path and, and not getting too caught up in, in too much of the results um, is kind of my uh, goals and expectations. And, and, and yeah, if that puts me in contention more come, come weekend, then that's awesome. And that's ultimately what, um, I think we all play for is just a chance to win. So, um, yeah, just kind of keep sticking to that and, and trying to have a good attitude about it. I was struck by your comfort level at the Masters. You finished ninth in your debut. Not a lot of people can say that. Why did that yeah. golf course in that week speak so much to you? Yeah. Um, it, was, it was the most nervous I've actually ever felt, I think. Up there, up there. It's top three for sure, but... Hitting that first tee shot, I was so nervous, but um, I'd just been playing so well going into the event, and I had a really nice first couple days where the weather was so bad the second day that it kind of just become a survival fest, and that kind of helped take away from the, the grandeur of, of Augusta and the Masters. So once I got to the final round, I think I started the day in like 30th, I had such a great pairing with Tony. I mean, he's he's the biggest chiller and was such a nice guy, and and kind of just the momentum I fed off of him for that final day and, and probably played one of the best rounds of my life there to, um, on Sunday. So um, I might have faked looking like I was 
composed and calm, <laughs> but I was definitely nervous. And I had the full shakes after that chip in on 16. I don't know how I even played the last two holes, but um, but yeah, it's just it's something that I can always draw on moving forward. Um, especially that I think that was my was my second major as a pro, I think, um, and only my third or fourth major ever. So. Um, having an early success to draw on is going to be big for me moving forward. You described yourself earlier as a bit of a freewheeler when it comes to your approach to the game, Sahith, and that kind of aggression is what makes you so exciting to watch. And we saw you get into contention playing aggressive golf in both Hartford and in Phoenix where it didn't work out for you. After those disappointments, did you yeah. in any way kind of adjust how you play or is that just simply how you're wired to play golf and it's not going to change? Yeah, I think it's just simply kind of how I play. And, uh, you know, I've gotten a lot better. I've just been, my whole life I've played so aggressive um, because I've always, like, I, I feel like I haven't given myself the opportunities to not play aggressive and not take advantages. But as I've gotten better, I've realized that I can pick and choose my spots. And, and uh, it's funny, the biggest the biggest thing is I know I, I was in contention a few times there and, and Every time I feel like I played well, even the first time at, at Sanderson, um, still had the lead going to the back nine, but I think I shot like one under, every, all three rounds I shot under par, so I just have to remind myself of all the good I did during those final rounds, and, and I really drew on that in, in Napa, you know, just thinking that, hey, I've played good golf, it's just a combination of, um, you know, not hitting the shot when it mattered, and a little bit of a, you know, bad luck, I'd say, as well. Um, but it's just to kind of keep that focus all the way till the end. And I made sure to do that at Napa for sure. I, um, especially at Travelers, um, you know, walking up the fairway on 18. Um, I, I don't know if it was like a lapse of focus or a lapse of concentration, but um, I had none of that in Napa. I was, I was locked in and, and Carl's been so helpful in, in helping me do that. Scythe, I know you're a Laker fan. 13 years before you were born, Magic and the Lakers lost to Larry Bird and the Celtics. He spent the entire offseason working out, thinking about Larry Bird. 85, the Lakers beat the Celtics. Yeah. How do athletes get over loss? How do you turn the page? Yeah, it's, uh, it's, uh, I don't know. It's competitiveness is just such a beautiful thing. It's, it's, uh, you use, at least for me, and I know I'm speaking for a lot of other guys out here, you use every little bit of fuel that you can get and just put that into your into your work process and um, just try and, uh, I guess, just grind as much as possible. It just, every, I, I feel like I hate losing more than I love winning. Um, so just to not feel that way again, you'll kind of do whatever it takes to, to, not, to not do it again. And inevitably, sports, how it works, it's going to happen again. There's going to be a lot of failures along the way, and I think for me, I personally, I just channel all those kind of failures in my in the work that I put in, the practice, um, whether that's in the gym, mentally, on the range, whatever it might be, um, just to kind of use that so that you don't make that same mistake again or you don't let that guy beat you. Um, it's definitely, it's interesting in golf because a lot of the times it's not a single person or or even a couple guys on a team that you're trying to beat, it's you're you're really battling with yourself a lot of the times. But um, there's definitely a lot of overlap, and and yeah, it's uh, I think it just goes back to hating losing more more than you love winning. Well, I imagine there'll be a lot of wins in your future, perhaps this week in Mexico. Thanks for the time. So, it's great visiting with you. Yeah, thank you. Thanks, Damon. Naaman. appreciate you guys.